And so do you believe temperature has an effect on your ammo, the way you put your ammo in the sun, the storage of it, and how it might affect your group sizes or your velocities? Well, in this video, we're going to try and find out. So instinctively, I think most of us by now know already that you should not leave your ammo in the sun because temperature affects the velocity of your ammunition. But the question I'm trying to answer is by how much and what is the best practice when you're out and about trying to shoot the best groups or maintain the best precision that you can. So to do that, bought a bunch of insulated boxes as well as insulated sleeves that goes inside of it. So it's a double insulation, and I took two different types of ammos. One is Ely Match, and the other is um, SK Long Range Match. And the idea is that I would have three different, actually four different samples. Uh, one control, one kept at minus 13 degrees Celsius. I'll put the Fahrenheit up here. One at minus four degrees Celsius and one at 30 degrees Celsius or very close to it. And one, I wanted to confirm what happens when this um, ammunition is kept at those temperatures for a period of time. And then two, when we get out to the range, actually see what happens when you open up these boxes and you shoot 10 bullets at different temperatures as these bullets um, get exposed to the ambient air and what effect that might have on the ES and SDs. So that's the experimental setup. Let's see how it goes. So first we took a single round and we drilled a hole in the lead bullet. And this was because the lead bullet is the biggest thermal mass of the entire assembly. So after we drilled the hole, we crimped a thermistor in the front of the bullet and then we exposed the single bullet to a 10 degree difference from 20 degrees Celsius to 30 degrees. And surprisingly, it only takes about three minutes for the bullet and the powder and the case to reach um, roughly the same temperature as the temperature it was exposed to. So that was surprising. The next test we did was we took that same bullet, put it back into the box, and then exposed the entire box to that same um, different or difference in temperature and we did this by taking the box outside and mm. this one caught me by surprise it actually took upwards of 27 to 30 minutes for the entire box to reach equilibrium and so when we finally got to the range it was time to open these boxes now i set these boxes up before i put them in the freezer fridge and um, in the storage units with thermistors already inside the boxes and that was to try and take readings as I was unloading these boxes and loading mags. I was also using an IR um, temperature gun to just to see what the temperatures were as I'm confirming it. And so this process was repeated for every single box, every single time we reloaded mags. But it's important to remember that we already found out that a single bullet exposed to a 10 degree Celsius difference it takes about three minutes to acclimatize and that is important because as we open these boxes and start loading magazines loading the rifles that bullet is slowly changing temperature so i think that's majority of where the testing and where the crux comes in of this entire setup um, it's avoiding massive temperature changes while you're getting ready to shoot so just to confirm we also looked at the environmentals um, and this changed obviously during the day. This is just the starting point. And so we finally got to shooting. So what you guys are seeing here is the first control group being shot. And you'll notice I'm using the S28 uh, scope mate for a view coming up. So I wanted to get a feel for it. And this is a sneak peek footage you guys are seeing here. So this is on the DNT optics, um, the one at 35 power. So at 55 yards and at 35 power, the targets we are shooting today, the red dot you were looking at is a 6 millimeter um, mm. red dot in a 25 by 25 square block. Not that you can see much of it 
in the window. Um, and the test procedure itself was shooting Ely and then SK and then Ely and then SK. And there was a couple of fouling shots between each just to make sure that the loop types was already captured. So I'm not going to bore you guys with all of this information or all of the shooting footage. The point was just it took a bit of time. Um, and I think while he carries on shooting, we can have a quick look. And so when we look at the data, it's quite interesting to see. Um, it turns out you probably get what you pay for. And the Ely showed the most consistency across the board, whereas the SK long range um, had a spike from 25 degrees to 30 degrees. So looking at the standard deviation at room temperature, we started off with a very good um, number, but eventually some separation was shown. Um, when you're looking at the extreme spread, as well as the velocities, you can see the big jump with what happened with uh, SK long range match above 25 degrees, where Ely match fairly kept its consistency in terms of SDs and ES and velocities throughout the entire test. So that was quite interesting for me. Um, I would be keen to hear your feedback in terms of the more cheap budget MOs, bulk MOs as to what their sensitivity and temperature is. But to me, at least it proved to me that there might be something to paying an extra $10 a box. Here's the two targets after it was complete. Um, the overall group size is actually fairly decent. There is a couple of um, test points where I was just zeroing in the rifle but overall if i actually tried to shoot a group i was able to hold a, a 0.5 inch group fairly easily but that wasn't the point of the test it was just interesting to see that i could still maintain this even while applying this sort of temperature delta to the ammunition and so in conclusion what have we actually learned well it turns out if you expose one of these to ambient temperatures, let's say a swing of 10 degrees Celsius, um, it only takes them about three minutes to acclimatize to the new environment. If you recall the non-linear graph, uh, majority of the temperature shift will happen in a short period, and then over time it will eventually reach the equilibrium. But for me, what this at least confirms is that I don't need to be so sensitive over my temperature of my ammo with the caveat knowing that I'm using match grade ammo um, as I thought I needed to be. So a 22 LR bullet will take something like three minutes to acclimatize, especially if you have a magazine that has the openings that exposes it to the air. Um, don't leave it in the sun, obviously, before you shoot, but theoretically, that means that you don't have to be worried about temperatures um, that much. However, on the other hand, if you put your box of ammo like this in the sun, that might take some consideration. Half an hour for this box to acclimatize, even at a 10 degree shift, is far more than I expected it to be. And I can only imagine for a brick of ammo um, how much more or how long the that will take. Now, given if you take rounds out of here, you put it in your, in your magazine and you leave that for plus three minutes, you theoretically shouldn't have an issue unless you do something very strange, like put it in the sun or in the freezer or something like that right before you uh, start your match or shoot groups. Now, I like to be on the safe side. So you guys might have seen these boxes before. They little uh, match day boxes that I designed. The link will be in the bio. You can download and print them for yourself. Basically, it'll take 100 rounds. It has a temperature and a humidity sensor built into the device. And that just allows me to know at what temperature, more or less, my ammo is being kept between stages or as I'm moving through the day. So quite surprising results. Some of it even surprised me, but I hope you at least learned something like to hear from you in the comments below what is your preferred method of managing this or if you've ever actually considered this to be a contributing factor to your results until next time cheers